Okay. Hello, and welcome to the Greenville Center of Parish Junior College. I'm Dwight Cheney, and I'm Dean of Academic Studies at the college. And my colleague? I'm Pam Engel, and I'm President of Parish Junior College. We're very glad to have you with us today. Yes. We want to visit with you a while and uh, talk about the future of uh, the Greenville Center of Parish Junior College and all the opportunities that are going to be available to the residents of this portion of the service area of, of Parish Junior College. As Dean of Academic Studies, I work with uh, various uh, instructional divisions and um, most of those could be lumped into the category of, of what many people refer to as general studies, those basic transfer courses. And we have found out with the increasing enrollments in the area that many students here uh, like to have the opportunity close to home and, and at a very reasonable rate, we like to think, in regard to tuition and fee costs uh, compared to other four-year uh, state public institutions across the state, that, that we're a very reasonable bargain to provide those basically first two years of instruction for students who want to get those foundational or traditional courses out of the way. I know a commitment on the part of Dr. Anglin has been to broaden the offerings uh, in this area and with those broadened offerings uh, we have the possibilities, uh, the very real possibilities of a, of a new facility uh, being constructed in the area. Dr. Anglin, you want to visit about sure. that? Well, when you look at the community colleges across the state of Texas, we see that about 73 percent of all freshmen and sophomore students in the state are enrolled in community colleges. And if you look at what we've been doing here at the Greenville Center this spring, our enrollment is 1177 students. That's up from 1029 stu students a year ago. And with that growth, we've been out of space here and we see a great need. So a, a year ago, the college purchased 172 acres just west of Greenville High School. And since last August, we've been working with the architectural firm of SHW to design a first building for a future campus here in, in Greenville for Paris Junior College. This first building will be about 42,000 square feet. Uh, we'll be able to handle up to about 2,500 students in this building. It will be a multi-purpose building. Uh, we plan on starting construction this May. Now this first building is west of the current Greenville High School, west of the football stadium. The initial entry will be along Lyons Lair, the street that runs in front of the high school, with a future entrance along uh, Monty Stratton Boulevard once it's constructed. This building will be a two-story structure. We'll have uh, nice state-of-the-art science labs, the most current technology in it, uh, some nice space for community events to be held, and plenty of classroom space. So we look forward to broadening the offerings in this new facility. Now that doesn't mean we're going to change the old traditional general studies that, that has been a mainstay of, of the offerings here, but I know that there's been a lot of interest in some air conditioning programs mm -hmm. and some other technical types of uh, degrees and certificates. Uh, we have a very active nursing contingent mm -hmm. of students in the area and they use clinical facilities at the local hospitals mm -hmm. in, in our service area in Greenville and other cities around and so that's a nucleus group of students that we know will continue to be in the area. There's always a demand for those types of professions. So Paris Junior College and the Greenville Center represents a great deal more than just what I mentioned a moment ago as, as the general studies or the, or the basic transfer courses. Mm -hmm. So there are various levels of certificates that, mm -hmm. that can be achieved by students in the area and, and various technical programs as well as continuing education offerings, uh, short courses with sometimes just enrichment mm -hmm. opportunities. Uh, we partner with local entities and uh, make sure that everyone is involved who has an interest in the area. So we hope we're getting the word out and, and that's one of the reasons we wanted to, to do a program such as this to just continue to talk about what all Parish Junior College is doing in the area. So there's a bright future for us it would seem. That's right. As long as continuing the general academic and the transfer classes so that we make the uh, first two years affordable and accessible for local 
individuals. We hope to be able to add the technical and vocational uh, training programs that we offer. Besides the nursing and um, office technology that we offer right now, we've added a criminal justice right. program so that young people are from this area could be trained in two years be and go into any form of uh, criminal justice fields. But we hope to be able to add to our vocational and technical offerings with a second building down the road as the need arises, which would be a workforce training okay. center. But we're always available for local business and industry to do customized training, whatever the training needs might be. We're here and we're ready to uh, provide those training needs. We're here, and uh, I might say that uh, summer registration started mm -hmm. Monday of this week, April 2nd, and uh, there will be a, a day of regular in-house registration um, on May the no, uh, May 23rd, and first day of class is May 30th. Now, that's for the summer mm -hmm. session. Uh, as hopefully most students in the area know, we do the traditional long-term mm -hmm. fall and spring, and so those schedules will be available later on in the summer. You can always go to the PJC website at www.parisjc.edu and find the online version of both the summer schedule and eventually the, the fall mm -hmm. schedule as well. And so uh, I would advise students to look at all the variety that's there. And I might mention that one of the, the fastest growing uh, course opportunities happen to be online distance mm -hmm. learning internet type courses. I, I would caution that, that students uh, be very much aware of the type of commitment that's involved in a course such as that. It takes a pretty disciplined individual to stay with a scheduled course routine when you don't have that instructor in front of you um, two or three mm -hmm. times a week as would be traditional courses. And so I know that students like the opportunity to sign up for those types of courses, but we have to advise that be sure you're computer literate, say. Uh, if you have a computer at home, that makes it much better. Now, we do have computer labs available in our facilities, but at the same time, for students to be truly successful in courses such as that, uh, it, it takes a more time and commitment, we, we found out, than, say, in the general classroom. So we, we've begun to talk about some of the, the general aspects of the college and we'll be back in just a moment and visit with you about some of the other considerations. Welcome back. Uh, as we were talking earlier, we're here to visit with the residents of the Hunt County area and maybe beyond for all I know regarding um, the various aspects of the Greenville Center of Paris Junior College. Uh, as Dean of Academic Studies, um, I'm involved in uh, various degrees particularly. Uh, I might mention them as the Associate of Arts degree, the Associate of Science degree, uh, and the Associate of Arts in Teaching is a new degree which is a, a really a state emphasis trying to get uh, the training of more teachers in the pipeline because uh, various figures are quoted that the state of Texas in, is in need of something like 26,000 teachers. There's that much of a shortage. And so uh, um, the community colleges across the state have been given the opportunity to get uh, interested individuals involved in teacher education programs early on so that they make up their minds maybe to whether or not they want to continue in that degree program. Too often it seems we get teachers trained and they go out into the workplace and they apply themselves for two or three years and then there's burnout and they decide, well, this isn't really what I want to do and, and they change careers. And, and of course, we can read the statistics that many individuals change careers five, seven times in their lifetime. So it's not that unusual, but at the same time, we need dedicated and long-term individuals involved in the teaching profession. That's really what we're all about, mm -hmm. uh, the, foundationally. We have a, a very strong articulation agreement with uh, Texas A&M University Commerce regarding that teacher education program. And so I would encourage individuals uh, that, that might be thinking of that route to come and talk to our advisors and look at the specific matchup of courses that um, are involved in teacher preparation. 
Now, we know in all of our service area, as is true across the state of Texas and the country, that many students aren't really prepared to get into college level credit courses immediately when they come to us. And so we've, we've traditionally had what we might refer to as the developmental courses, uh, which allow students an opportunity to refine their math skills particularly, which we found across the state are, are very deficient. There's reading uh, and writing, those three particular areas we can help students with and uh, make them more confident uh, to get into the credit courses and be, we hope, more success, <coughs> pardon me, successful along the way. <laughs> Dr. Anglin, I know we're about to embark on a, a very exciting venture and participate in something that has this type of background development for students as a part of it. Mm -hmm. Would you talk about it? There, well, there's two initiatives that I'd like to, okay. to mention this, this morning. The first one is closing the gaps. Oh. And this is a statewide initiative. When you look at the economy of Texas, the workforce of Texas, it's been identified that we need to educate an additional half million people throughout the state so that we have a trained workforce to meet the needs of the, few, of the industry in the future in Texas. So that means, especially with the community colleges, we need to get more people enrolled than we've ever enrolled before so that we can get them trained for jobs for the future of Texas. That affects every one of us. But through closing the gaps, we look at taking people wherever they are mm -hmm. educationally and preparing them to enter either college level classes or in the workforce training so that we can prepare them for the future. The other area that I wanted to, to mention is something that we just found out recently and we're extremely excited about this. Paris Junior College has been named as an Achieving the Dream institution and we are thrilled because this means that we will identify areas where we can help students be successful. All of our decisions will be data driven, but this initiative helps us identify areas so that we can do the things that we need to do to help our students be successful in the future and to achieve their dream. We have a five-year commitment to achieving the dream and the way we look at this, this is going to help our current students and students at Paris Junior College for years to come. There were 58 colleges across the United States that were achieving the dream schools over the last three years and they are getting ready to add an additional 26 schools in eight states, I believe, to the Achieving the Dream initiative. So we're very excited about bringing Achieving the Dream to Northeast Texas and to the people that live in Hunt County and this portion of the state of Texas. Sounds like it's fitting right in with that uh, mission of the community college as we've envisioned it for a long time, but it's, it's putting us on a higher pinnacle of achievement. It, it will. It's not going to be easy and it's going to be a lot of hard work for the people that work at the college, but our students will reap the results of this and the rewards from our taking the initiative to be in, and achieving the dream. School. Those types of challenges we've found in the past have, have really provided opportunities mm -hmm. for individuals in our service areas to, in, in their own way, achieve their own dream. That's right. Because the goals of education are out there, but sometimes individuals just don't know how to become involved. And so we want everyone to know that, that there are contact people at all our centers mm -hmm. and uh, just come to the offices and begin to ask questions. And that way we'll try to put you in touch with those individuals who can steer you in the right direction. And uh, developmental studies is really a foundational area of, of the community college system across the state of Texas. And uh, th there shouldn't be any question in individuals' minds as to whether or not they should be involved in those. Now, sometimes just the idea that these are non-credit based puts a little bit of, of apprehension or concern in the minds of individuals. But we found if you will work with us and, and begin to understand what the system is all about, there, there will be that um, 
stair step, if you will, to getting into the credit mm -hmm. programs and uh, maybe some certificate areas or maybe an individual wants to become a teacher, as I was alluding to earlier, and I would hope those types of individuals would stay with us, uh, stay with the system, transfer to a four-year school, and become a teacher in Texas because it's almost a calling. That's right. And uh, as it would be in, in many of the mm -hmm. professions. And I would say if you are an adult and you've always mm -hmm. had that dream of yeah. being a, a teacher or, or being anything you want to be, then come talk to someone at PJC and let us get you started and get you directed so that you could do whatever you wanted to do, that dream that you've always had. We'll be back in just a moment and we'll visit with you further about the uh, opportunities at Paris Junior College. Welcome back. As I said earlier, we're here talking about Paris Junior College and the opportunities available here at the Greenville Center. Uh, just to reiterate, uh, summer classes are about to begin uh, sooner than most people think, I guess. And uh, as of just this past Monday, April 2nd, we began uh, early registration for the summer. And uh, you could check the schedule, uh, the printed schedule that's available to see what all classes are available. There will be uh, in the center registration on May the 23rd. Uh, that's from 1 to 6 in the afternoon. So there'll be an entire staff here working with students to uh, put together a schedule for the summer. Uh, basically, we have two summer terms, uh, even though some of the, the technical programs sometimes have one long summer term, but those are very specialized courses, uh, and students probably know already if they're going to be involved in something like that. We know we have a lot of, sometimes they're referred as transient students, and I don't really like that expression, but uh, students who might be going uh, already to four-year schools across the state of Texas, and they come back home to spend time with their parents in the summer, uh, and the parents might encourage them, I don't right. know, to, to go to summer school, and we have it available. We have it available both day and night classes, and one thing I might mention, one of the benefits is uh, cost of tuition at the community colleges is usually less than half of what it is at the four-year universities That's in the right. state. For those university students that are home for the summer, it's a good opportunity to get a class out of the way, be in a small class, get that individualized attention, and, and jump start your fall semester. Exactly. We know that there are lots of students who come in uh, and ask questions about will these courses transfer back to whatever mm -hmm. school across the state. And so I said earlier that we have articulation agreements with many schools and that guarantees that these courses, these foundational general studies transfer courses will fit in, into the degree sequence uh, at some other school. Mm -hmm. The summer is available. Uh, I, I might mention too that again, uh, at, at the um, beginning of May, we will have early registration Perfect. for the fall term. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, of course, most of our students would enroll in the long semesters. And uh, we shouldn't leave out that we work with many, many high schools in the, in the service area, offering what's known typically as dual, dual credit. credit. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the, the legislature, in its wisdom, has mandated even that these types of opportunities be available to those, uh, in those, those students in the public schools at an early day. Uh, we started out with juniors and seniors, but uh, we have credit courses available, oftentimes taught by uh, qualified individuals in those public schools. So we've had students uh, accumulate as many as 30, out, 30 mm -hmm. credit hours while they were still in, uh, in high school. And so that is a great, great opportunity for those students who do qualify because mm -hmm. placement uh, scores are the basis for uh, admission into that type of, of coursework. And uh, qualified instructors, we always make sure that those individuals are the type of people that we want in the classroom. And that brings to mind the, the staff even here at the mm -hmm. center. Uh, we have a number of full-time faculty in a variety of areas, uh, and we have over 45 uh, faculty, both full-time and part-time, associated with our center. And so 
when we hire those individuals, we maintain the Southern mm -hmm. Association of Colleges and Schools guidelines. The master's degree is the foundational degree that these individuals would have. And so uh, in our interviews, we even make them do teaching demonstrations so that some of us will know what type of delivery is going on in the classroom. And so that, that's somewhat innovative. It, it's been going on in many areas for a long time. But uh, I like to see what type of individuals are going to be teaching our students, not only in Paris, but but in Greenville, Sulphur Springs, or other parts of, of the service area of the college. So we, we've got some really good personnel, and I know Dr. Anglin has a perspective about that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the, the best things that I've found at Paris Junior College. We have a faculty um, that I believe tops in the nation, a faculty that are teaching for the right reasons, that love their students, that love their subject matter, mm -hmm. and that thrive on seeing students succeed and uh, achieve their the goals and uh, their dreams, yeah. yeah. But the faculty, just a, a great faculty right. that are really caring, uh, qualified, and do an outstanding job in the classroom. Indeed. Two, I might emphasize that, that when we advertise, we're very interested in individuals from the immediate mm -hmm. area applying. Uh -huh. And so we like to have local people involved in the instruction mm -hmm. of students in the Greenville area. And mm -hmm. so that's what you're going to find mm -hmm. at, the, at the Greenville Center of Paris Junior College. Uh, many local who know, you know, the, the businesses, the, the, the churches, the other groups mm -hmm. that, that are a foundational aspect of, of, of this particular part of Texas. And so that's the type of commitment the college has made. Mm -hmm. We feel that that faculty and staff will work very, very closely with individuals to make sure they're on the right path for their future. Mm -hmm. So with all of those considerations, we ask you to come out to the center, uh, the Greenville Center of Paris Junior College uh, here on Jack Finney Bo Boulevard uh, next to L3. Uh -huh. uh, hopefully everyone knows where our location happens to be. Mm -hmm. But um, come out and, and do some visiting with the staff. There are advisors here that, that can sit down with individuals. And again, we're not talking about just the traditional age uh, student. We're talking about... If, if you're a, a housewife and you decide, I, I want to do something else, uh, we've even set up some programs in the early morning and late afternoon mm -hmm. for those specialized groups of individuals so that they can, they can see whether or not uh, some other career might be something they would be interested in. Uh, and there, there might be some teachers in that group, and I, I'm going to continue to harp on that line of interest because um, we get the data from the state always as to how, how much of a commitment we need those individuals mm -hmm. to make and, and be a part of the teaching system. The, the community college is a part of that system, and, and we're here to serve uh, the citizenry of this area. So we appreciate the, the time that you've given us today. Dr. Anglin, do you have any parting Just comments? Say, uh, we are located on Jack Finney Boulevard now, but um, oh, that's August <laughs> of 2008, we will be relocating in our new facility off of Lion Slayer and Monty Stratton. Very good. I guess this feels like home for the moment, yeah, it does. but it doesn't take long for uh, students to, to feel that uh, closeness and that camaraderie, mm -hmm. uh, a spirit that, that is very much a part of the operation that, that we have here at the Greenville Center mm -hmm. of Paris Junior College. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, we appreciate being with you.